A pivotal moment in history just happened. In a seemingly upward trend, several nations across the globe have applied for a seat at the North Atlantic Treaty Organization's table, or more commonly known as NATO. The most recent flag to be ceremonially added was none other than Sweden, a slight surprise considering the decades-long commitment to non-alignment. On March 7, 2024, Sweden abandoned their decades-long commitment to non-alignment following Finland's own cessation to become NATO's newest member. Historically, Finland and Sweden both sought deep institutionalization with NATO, but ultimately remained on the outside of the alliance. Sweden's partnership with NATO was based on its historic policy of military non-alignment. Throughout World War I, World War II, and the Cold War, Sweden remained a neutral country. Following Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, Sweden's stance changed. Although historically remaining neutral, the country began actively preparing to defend against a full-scale invasion of the Soviet Union during the Cold War era. Now, with this popping off in the Ukraine, this fear could become a reality. This has been the biggest security crisis Europe has seen since the Second World War, and with the close proximity to Russia, this posed an increased threat to Sweden. After a long democratic process, Sweden has finally been welcomed into the NATO alliance. Consisting of 32 members, NATO is regarded as one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, alliance in the world. But with this new addition, this begs the question, how powerful is Sweden's military? Out of 145 countries considered for the annual Global Firepower Review, Sweden is ranked 29th overall. The GFP is a yearly defense review that evaluates countries based on available firepower and military presence. When conducting the annual review, each country's prolonged defensive or defensive military campaign is evaluated. The multitude of categories reviewed are weighted and processed through a formula called the Power of Index. The rating produced is used to complete the finalized GFP list. In the grand scheme of things, ranking 29th out of 145 is a challenging feat. How did Sweden manage to leverage this? First, we must take a look at the geography of Sweden. The Scandinavian country has a small population of 10 million citizens. To put this into perspective, it is just slightly over the population of New York City, which is currently sitting at about 8.5 million. Despite this, Sweden is one of the largest countries in Europe by landmass, only sitting behind Ukraine, Spain, and France in area. It is also notably close to the western border of Russia, separated in the north just by Finnish Lapland and across the Baltic Sea in the south. As a smaller country in population, Sweden's military is comparatively smaller than a majority of other NATO countries. Though small, they pack a mighty punch with 25,600 active personnel, 11,800 military reserves, and 22,200 home guard. Despite their smaller than average numbers, Sweden actually has a lot in common with their sister nations. Sweden has always had a ready-to-go army system. Between the 17th century and 1900, Sweden was implementing an allotment system. Then, in 1901, the country revisited their armed services requirements. Mandatory military service, or conscription, was implemented. This meant, at the time, that all Swedish men were to serve in the military for up to 15 months. If the soldiers wished, they could continue their service and train for longer. In 2010, the male-only system was replaced with a gender-neutral system. This means, regardless of your gender, Sweden still expects you to do your part. Several countries around the world require their citizens to serve in the military for a certain amount of time. Unlike their counterparts, every citizen living in the country between the ages of 16 and 70 is a part of their total defense service. Should Sweden need to prepare for war, everyone has a role to play. Sweden may not have the numbers to overwhelm one of the world's superpowers, but they won't go down without a fight. Our Swedish friends are well equipped with munitions. Inside their armories, you will find 110 Leopold II main battle tanks, each equipped with a 120mm gun, two 51mm machine guns, and grenade launchers, as well as advanced defense systems and armor. They also have hundreds of CV-90 infantry fighting vehicles and 26 Archer self-powered howitzers. The Archer self-propelled howitzers are Swedish-made self-propelled rapid-fire. 
The primary part of the system is a fully automated 52 caliber long gun howitzer and a remote controlled M151 protector mounted on a modified 6x6 chassis of the Volvo A30D all-terrain hauler. In less than 20 seconds, the crew can engage an enemy, fire, and drive off. In a larger view, Sweden's navy may be small, but it's the second largest force in the Baltic with Germany taking the top spot. The Swedish Navy men tend to operate within the areas of the Baltic Sea and along the country's western coast. Roughly 2,300 are enlisted in the naval forces, with half being sailors and half being amphibious forces. Within their means, the country operates nearly 400 ships, including four submarines, seven corvettes, and nine mine warfare ships. Arguably, Sweden's Air Force is the most notable aspect of their military force. Consisting of nearly 3,000 active personnel, the branch operates over 200 aircraft. Most notably, they boast six squadrons of Gripen multi-role fighter jets. The Saab JAS-39 Gripen, another Swedish-made material, is a low-maintenance, single-engine supersonic aircraft. The dubbed Anti-Russia Fighter specializes in air superiority and ground attack operations and can be outfitted with a variety of bombs as well as air-to-air, air-to-surface, and anti-ship missiles. It can also carry reconnaissance pods and has advanced electronic warfare equipment. The Swedish Air Force operates 100 Gripens, including the newest E-model that has since been upgraded to include better avionics and sensor systems. The Gripen is considered to be the world's most capable 4th Gen Plus aircraft. Additionally, they operate in a variety of other aircraft, supporting in electronic warfare, early warning, tanking, and transport, as well as drones. Notable inclusions to their fleet include six C-130 Hercules and 15 UH-60 Blackhawk helicopters. If that wasn't enough to convince you this small but mighty country can hold their own, then perhaps their special operations team will. Acting since 2011, the Swedish Special Operations Task Group is headquartered at Karlsborg Fortress in Karlsborg Vostra Gotland country. This group of highly trained individuals answers directly to the Supreme Commander, the highest ranking officer, and the Director of Special Forces, and are ready to deploy at any time to any environment, jungle, desert, mountain, urban, rural, or whatever is required. The personnel are specially selected, trained, and ultimately equipped for air, sea, and land infiltration, medical, logistical, and technical support. The two main missions of the Special Operations Group are combat tasks and intelligence and reconnaissance. The capabilities and missions of the group are kept highly classified, but they have been known to operate throughout the Balkans, the Middle East, and Africa in recent years at the forefront of international conflict. Some may view Sweden as small and insignificant, but their force is nothing to play around with. Sweden's move to join the NATO alliance is both symbolic and a military important decision. With their superior knowledge of the Baltic Sea, impressive arms and organization, the Swedish military is more than well equipped to join other NATO superpowers in a fight and help lead them to victory. How does Sweden stack up against fellow NATO allies like the United States or potential adversaries like Iran? Tune in to find out. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Until next time.